Hey everybody, David here. What are we talking about? We're talking about the police department. Uh, I have with me a retired police uh, officer. She's ex-military. Um, she uh, has been so, so kind to actually, uh, to actually uh, be involved in my line of questioning, which is pretty radical, I have to t say, is Tamia Dow. Tamia, you're a Christian. You, you've been on the police department. You've seen the activity that happens on the street. You've seen the activity that happens within the department. Tamia, is there demonic activity associated with this? Are there demons that are attached to these things, meaning the demon of prejudice, uh, the stuff that's happening on the street, the demons within the police department? Yes. Well, there's demons within the police department. There's demons uh, in the society. I, I know this personally from uh, my interactions th throughout my career. You know, I remember actually seeing a demon manifest on a homeless person when I was dealing with him and he knew who I was and he called me by name. And I was like, you know, I was at first I was shocked. But the thing is, I, I'm a very strong Christian. So and, and the way that this man was trying to talk to me, um, it it. it there was definitely a demon on him, a demonic spirit. And to say, when you look at the fact that you have people who started out with a peaceful protest, when we say protest, rally, that's all peaceful. And then you had people who came and used that as a cover and then committed violence. And uh, these people who were throwing things at officers, these all of that stuff is, is a demonic, dark realm, hatred. We know yeah. hatred is not of God. If it's opposite of love, it's hatred. It's demonic. It is definitely of another realm, uh, not. Yeah. And we know that we don't fight a bit against flesh and blood, you know? So we are fighting against these spirits, these principalities, these demons, the rulers of the influence of the air in this world. And yes, because police officers come from society, right? Yeah. And it's because you say in your oath, so help me God. Well, if you don't believe in God, look at the picture of uh, the officer. You know, I, I keep forgetting his name. I can never remember this man's name that put his knee on George Floyd's neck. And I believe that's a, a block, a spiritual block, <laughs> you know, that I can't yeah. remember his name because I don't want to give his name any credence. But if you look at his face, even every Christian that I know is like, there's like, there was a demon on him. You know, it's like he was not there, you know, and this is what we have to understand because demons will occupy vessels that don't have the Holy Spirit within them. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me back up because I want to be detailed on this. When you look at those rallies, are you seeing, I'm not talking about demonic activity. Are you seeing demons? When you look at these burnings and these lootings and these, uh, you know, uh, radical protests, are you seeing demons themselves doing this? Or yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I'm going to say that's what they're yes. what they're embodied that, by. Yes, right. Yes, and I do too. I agree. Now, also, I do, see. I tell people, look, if you've got one demon over here showing himself. That's a diversion, because while one demon is showing himself, you've got a thousand over here that's casting spells and hex and doing dirty things to people. OK, demons will never come out and be exposed only for two reasons. One is they have an agenda. Number two is we can call them out as Christians and expose them and get rid of them. So we in the in the protest, we have Antifa, which I think is a diversion. But. <laughs> Within the protest, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about a police officer's, his eyes and the way he looked, and, and not just that police officer, I've noticed several, and I've noticed there seems to be some type of demonic uh, presence or something that is an influence to me. Uh, are there people? police officers on the department, could there actually be demons within the police department that's instigating and initiating some of this stuff? Well, as I mentioned, we recruit police officers from the society. 
And there are people of many different belief systems within our society. Not everybody is a Christian. Not everybody loves God. Right, right. Okay, so uh, here's my last question. As a police officer, as a Christian, would it be appropriate for you to walk onto a scene and you're seeing, uh, and I'm making this up, okay? So, but, and there's there's a there's a, a guy there and he has a gun and he's pointing it toward you. He's going to shoot you. Would it be possible to me uh, to walk up to that gentleman and cast a demon out of him, or uh, or or say, "May I pray with you?" In other words, let's bring God into the picture. Would it be possible for police officers? Would it be probable? Would it be appropriate for police officers to bring God with them on the scene to take care of things instead of trying to deal with it themselves? Well, I'll just let you know that I personally, because I mentioned to you that I'm five foot four, but I believe that my entire time working, because we worked as single people units, which means I rode by myself and someone else was in a car somewhere else. And if I needed backup, I had to wait for someone to join me. But I always knew and always prayed and asked that the Lord had my angel beside me. And I believe I had a 13 foot angel that went everywhere with me while I was at work. Now, as for that scenario you just gave, I'll be real with you. Any police officer here, you give that 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 um, scenario that you just gave is we are going to stop that threat before we pray for them because a bullet I will kill me and a demon can kill me with a bullet if I am not smart enough to know that I've been given a weapon to defend myself and therefore, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I handle yes. business, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I was, I, that, well, I was a little extreme with the guy with the gun, but it could be just a homeless person uh, with aggravated assault and, you know, instead of grabbing them and shuffling them to, to stand back and cast the demon in the name of Jesus, that demon comes out of you, you know? Of course, I know your, your partner's going to look at you like you're mad or something, you know? Yeah, and, and and that's, go, this person's <laughs> lost their mind. But that's not going to happen, David, because we, first, first and foremost, we, we want, we do what is called our safety, officer safety. Okay. So, why when you see police officers come on a scene, I don't know how many cops episodes or whatever you've seen, you right. always see a police officer say, hey, listen, you know, is it okay if I pat you down? Listen, I'm going to cuff you for my safety, okay? Yeah. Once that's done, if I want to start praying for the guy or whatever, it's on, right? Okay. Because you know that he's secure and I am safe. Right. I understand. I understand. And I agree, but I will say this. The one thing I don't just that I don't agree with, but you may not even you, you may agree with me when I say this. I, I talk about silent eviction. You walk into a room, somebody's got a gun on you. You silently cast that demon out. You don't have to say right. anything to him. Whatever you walk in, you cleanse the demons out of rooms. Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you carry God in with you. You carry yeah, God I in with you, and God take control of this situation. We both agree on that, don't we? Oh, yeah. I used to pray when I was, we call it rolling code, where you're doing red lights and siren and you're on your way to a call. And yeah. I would always pray. And I used to tell people Jesus was my co-pilot all along the way. You talk about what other pastors, so-called ministers, don't talk about. I'm just so grateful for the work that you have done. So thankful for everything that you're doing and fighting for us in Hollywood. Stop playing church. It's time to be the church. And that's what I love about it.